Hey everybody, it's TJ with TJ's Magic Touch and today I'll be showing you how to create a Hershey bar wrapper in Photoshop. Let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is click on Create New. This will open up your new document panel. You want to make sure that you are working in inches and not any other measurement. For your width, you will type in 6.5 and for your height, you will type in 5.46. I like to keep my resolution at 300 and work in pixels per inch. And I like to keep my color mode set on RGB color. In the top right hand corner of your new document panel is where you can name your file. So I'm going to name this file Among Us Hershey Bar. After naming your file, you can click on the blue create button. This will open up your Photoshop workspace. When you open up your Photoshop workspace, it will look different from mine. Typically, when you open up Photoshop CC, you'll see your workspace set up in Essentials default. I do not work like that. I have moved the tools around to where they best benefit me when I'm designing. So my workspace is set up a little differently. Let's get into our design. In your options bar, you'll click on view and go down to rulers. An alternative to this step is control R for windows or command R for Mac. In order to get your guide marks on the screen, you're going to click on the ruler and you're literally just going to drag it to the place where you want it to be. You're going to repeat this step three more times to have all four of your guide marks. To quickly zoom in and out, you will hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and zoom with the roller on your mouse. Now with your guide marks on the screen, you can see where you will be working at. This middle area here is the front of your Hershey wrapper. This bottom section and top section will be the back of your bar. I will be working from a folder on my hard drive that contains a lot of different Among Us images and characters. Um, Majority of the time this folder will be off screen because I have a second monitor. It's easier for me when I work. So I do what's called the drag and drop method. I literally take an image from my folder and I drop it directly into the file that I am working on. So whenever you see an image pop up, it is the drag and drop method that I am utilizing. Here I've decided to drop in this background. 
as long as your move tool is selected this tool right here in the top left hand corner you can adjust whatever image you're dropping in to whatever size you want it to be Since you're seeing my design process in somewhat real time, you'll see some of the steps I take to fix things. Here I dropped in a JPEG and I clicked on my eraser tool. A message will pop up about rasterizing the file. You always click OK. It's always there. I switched over from my regular eraser tool to my magic eraser tool to kind of delete those backgrounds or delete the white in the image to see if it was something that I wanted to use. I clicked on my move tool to resize it. I didn't like it. I clicked on the layer itself and pressed delete. Throughout various parts of this video, I won't be talking as there won't be much to explain similar to this part of the video right here where I'm just dropping in images and seeing what I like versus what I don't like. This part of the video, I'm going to explain a little bit. I dropped in a PNG image that was completely black. Of course, the background was transparent. So I pulled the layer up to where I wanted. I clicked on effects at the bottom, and then I clicked on color overlay to change the color of the sign to see how I wanted it to look. With the color picker option open, you can pick any color on the screen to change your image to. Then I decided to add a stroke with the yellow that is on the screen as well to see if I like the way that look. I removed the color overlay. So basically I just played with my special effects panel until the image looked how I wanted it to look. Once I got the image to look the way that I wanted it to look, I began to move it around with um, the other elements on the screen. Also, you'll see here on the side that 
I was double clicking layers and moving stuff that I may not have necessarily wanted to move or highlight. So I took the time to double click on the name and rename each layer, which is a really good technique or a really good practice that I often forget. You should name your layer so you know which element you're adjusting and moving. Instead of making another of this same layer, I clicked the layer and I dragged it down to the bottom where you see this plus sign at and I made a copy of the layer and moved the image over. Now that our design is complete, we need to set it up for print. So we'll go to File and New, and we're going to create a document that is sized at eight and a half by 11. Once we select that, we're going to hit Create. This opens up a second workspace. On our original space, we'll go to Layer, and we'll flatten our image. Flattening your image gives you just one whole picture instead of a bunch of layers. Now we're going to do my favorite drag and drop method. We'll drag our image from one workspace to the second workspace and then we'll copy that layer to give us a second image on that sheet of paper.
if you like after this step you can go to layer again and flatten this particular image but you do not have to you can simply go to file save as and save it as a PDF That is all for this video. The last few things you'll see on the screen is basically the process of saving the file as a PDF. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. I also hope you stick around to see the rest of the videos that will come along in this Among Us series. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, and if you haven't already, hit the notification bell so you'll know every time I upload. Bye guys.